Psalms 46, the Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear? Hmm? Or will not we fear? Boy, you ought to underscore that because a lot of you act scared to death a lot. Every time the media says boo, you get scared. It sounds to me like you need a refuge. Hmm? Uh, God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear? Though the earth be removed. Boy, some of you just get a little tremor and you, you're all fall to pieces. Hmm? And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. The word Selah means stop and think about that. And really, it doesn't take too awful much to knock people out of church and knock people out of the center of God's will. It doesn't take too awful much because folks really don't have the Lord as their refuge and strength. Oh, they got their credit cards, or they got their banker man, or they got their job, or they got their house, or they got all kinds of other things they put their stock in. But when the Lord's your refuge and your strength, can I say everything else in the world come apart, but you won't, because he's your refuge. Verse 4, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing, the good testimonies. Thank you for being our refuge and our strength. Thank you for being a present help in times of trouble. Thank you, Lord, for being there when we don't even know you're there. And thank you, Lord, for being the true and only steady thing in our lives. Now, Father, have your will and way tonight. Help us from the Word of God. And, Lord, certainly help your people. I know it's Wednesday night. I know we had a long weekend of preaching and singing. I know folks have been working. And, Lord, in body, they're tired. And, Lord, they're, they're, they may be exhausted. It was 100 degrees today. And, Lord, uh, but they are in the house of God. And I pray you'd refresh them. And I pray that, Lord, you'd settle them and you'd do something special for them tonight. Lord, be with Brother Bobby in the hospital. God, touch that man of God. Lord, I pray you'd give the physicians and the surgeons wisdom concerning his health. I pray for others, Lord, that are sick. Brother Bob, Miss Sonny, I do pray for little Bella. She's got to have surgery tomorrow. You'd be with her. God, the surgeons, I pray she'd recover rapidly. And we certainly do pray for those that are providentially hindered. Help us now. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And amen. This psalm provides us several things. Uh, the first thing it provides us is comfort. In verse 1, verse 7, and verse 11, we find that God is our refuge. That ought to comfort every believer. Our refuge, the place we can run to when everything falls apart, is the Lord. Uh, can I say that uh, uh, these uh, three refuges referring to him shows that God uh, is our strength. Uh, we find that in verse number two. Uh, uh, friend, I have learned that when I wasn't able uh, and I'd come to the ends of me, uh, uh, the Lord was able to strengthen me and take me farther than I thought I could go. Uh, I've learned that when things would come against me uh, and I didn't know which way to look or which way to turn uh, and thought I'd be overwhelmed, there he was and he was my strength. Uh, he is uh, that present help uh, in trouble. Uh, can I say it not only reveals that he's our strength, it also reveals uh, 
He is our security. Uh, aren't you glad you don't have to keep yourself saved tonight? Uh, aren't you glad uh, uh, that heaven doesn't depend on you and your works and your abilities tonight? Uh, I'm glad that, hallelujah, He's my anchor within the veil. Uh, I'm thankful I'm in Him and He's in me. Uh, he is my security tonight. Uh, Hey, uh, I don't have security uh, uh, in the dollar. I don't have security in the 401ks. Uh, I don't have the security in houses and lands. Uh, my security is eternal, uh, and it's in Him tonight. Uh, we find He's our strength. Uh, he's our security. But also, uh, that final refuge shows that He's our sovereign. He is God be a good day in our lives when we realize he is God nothing's ever occurred to him and he does all things well that don't mean that every situation you find in life is going to work out the way you want it to work out but it will work out to his glory he is God and can I say he's a just God and he lets it rain on the just and the unjust alike uh, and can I say that I've seen people uh, at the death of the loved one, say, if God really loved me, why'd he let my loved one die? That wasn't in God's hands, friend. Uh, your loved one died because Adam and Eve chose to disobey God. Uh, they chose to sin, uh, and sin came to this world, and death by sin, uh, and we're all going to die unless Jesus raptures us out of here. Uh, but can I say, uh, if only uh, those that were wicked died, uh, 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 then everybody would want to say they're saved so they wouldn't have to die. Mm -mm. But can I say it's not about dying it's about being ready to die mm -mm. he's God and he knows what he's doing we don't even know which side the bed get out on most time but God knows what he's doing and so we find we can draw comfort in this psalm it provides comfort but can I say this it also provides a command look at verse number 10 be still and know that I'm God. You know what our problem is a lot, Brother Ed? We are so busy, got so much noise in our lives, we don't even know where God's at. And you know what was good about this past weekend? For a solid weekend, we had to be still and hear the voice of God, uh, and we knew He was God. You know why you get all hyped up in revival meeting? Because you're not watching TV, you're not on uh, social media, you're not running here and there, you're not mowing grass, you're not doing this and that. You're sitting in the house of God, uh, and you're hearing from heaven, uh, and you come to where your faith is built up, and you know God is God. Uh, he tells us to be still. Quiet the noise of this world out of our lives. Quiet the fear out of our lives. Just be still and wait on God for a little while, and then you'll know He's God. Mm -hmm. Our problem is, is we run at lightning speed all the time, and we want to give God a window to work. And God says, no, I'll work in my time frame. You need to sit down and wait for me to work. Mm -hmm. We've got a command. Be still and know that I'm God. And then we also are given a challenge in this psalm. Verse number 4 says, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. You say, that doesn't look like much of a challenge. Just hold on, neighbor. All right? Now, can I say when it mentions there is a river, that is a very emphatic statement. There is a river. That's factual. Can I say the river that it is speaking of is the river Kidron? And it says, the streams whereof shall make glad. Can I say, Kidron had streams that broke off of it. And the two streams was Gihon and Shiloh. And can I say, this river and these streams uh, fed the city of God. We know it as Jerusalem. And can I say that mm, fresh water coming through this river and through these streams made glad the city of God. They had water. They had a water source. Uh, 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 they had something that would sustain them uh, when other cities didn't have that great privilege. Uh, and can I say, uh, uh, we find there is a river. But notice something very interesting. I was reading the Word of God the other day and saw this. 
It spoke to my heart. It says, The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, comma, the holy place, Jerusalem. That's what he's talking about. The holy place of the tabernacles. Do you see that? That is plural. The tabernacles of the Most High. Can I help you with something? God only had one tabernacle in the Old Testament. Can I say when the tabernacle was then done away with because Solomon got the temple built, there was only one temple. Now why is it plural? You think God knew he only had one tabernacle. Why is it tabernacles? Well, do you remember hearing this verse? Paul wrote to the church at Corinth that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hmm? You've been bought with a price, but your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Well, if I understand that, Trevor, you're saved. Your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. There's one temple. You're saved. Your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's two temples. You're saved. Your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's three temples. Are you starting to see the picture? How many temples, how many tabernacles are in here? Let's read that verse again. Hmm? It says, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. I'm going to preach for just a few minutes on the river of God. The river of God. Can I say the tabernacles... Uh, 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 has a spiritual application that we're the temple of the Holy Ghost and we're made glad by the river and the streams are the offshoots of this river. So let's look at the river of God. Can I say the river that is mentioned in verse number 4, there is a river, it denotes first of all the presence of God. Can I say there will be nothing that makes us more glad than the presence of God? Uh, did we not have that this weekend? Uh, 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 whether through singing or through preaching or through testifying, uh, God walked through this place uh, and His presence made us glad. Uh, I don't know about your temple, but mine was bubbling over. Are you listening? Uh, I've been feasting on it all week long. Uh, uh, why? Uh, because a river flowed through here. Uh, 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 the presence of God. Uh, can I say the river also denotes the power of God? Uh, uh, listen, I'm glad we're not serving a dead God. Uh, we're not serving a God of stone or a God of wood, uh, a God on a mantle that we bow down to every night. Uh, we're serving Almighty God uh, uh, who has all power. He's omnipotent. Uh, hey, only God can change a life. Uh, take a sinner, wash him clean, and make him a child of God. Uh, only God uh, I can work through this little ch uh, church on the little knob of a hill we're sitting on. Uh, I can touch people's lives uh, throughout the world. Uh, only God can do that. Uh, and the power of God uh, will make glad uh, uh, the tabernacles of God. Uh, listen, I don't know about you. I don't like dead services. Mm. I like it when the power of God starts moving and when lives are touched. Uh, thank God for the power of God. The river also denotes the peace of God. Thanks be unto God, I got peace tonight. I don't know what's going on in the world, and I'll be honest with you, I'm glad I don't know a lot what's, of what's going on. I, I'm glad I don't know what's going on in the back room and what uh, uh, Joe Biden, whoever's got his hand up his shirt using him as a puppet, what he's uh, selling off to China. I'm glad I don't know all that stuff. But can I say, regardless of what all's going on, I got peace. I know the Lord. Mm. Uh, uh, the Lord has promised that His uh, righteous won't be forsaken. I got peace. Regardless of what goes on in this wicked world, I know the one who owns it all. Mm. But can I say, the river also denotes purpose of God. You know what will make you glad? When you have a purpose of God. When you're busy about His business. 
It don't matter if you're the one that runs the sweeper uh, in the sanctuary or if you're the one that's stuffing uh, tracks in the bags. Uh, uh, if you're one who gets up early and prays for the, uh, the church family. Uh, uh, if you're one that teaches a class. Uh, uh, if you're one that plants flowers. Uh, it don't matter what you do. Uh, if you're doing something for the honor and glory of God, it makes you glad uh, uh, you know you're unworthy to do anything for him uh, uh, but that you're able to do just a little something for God uh, it thrills your soul to be able to do that uh, but can I say it also denotes a passion for God see rivers are flowing uh, every now and then they'll get dammed up you got to blow up the dam uh, but can I say that flowing shows life and can I say that because you've been made alive and born again and made alive by the spirit of God uh, you have a passion for the things of God you want to see the progress of what God's are doing you know we started to build this building I actually had somebody come to me and say preacher I don't want to grow I said well you don't want to be in the will of God then do you they looked at me I said the Bible says to grow in the grace and nurture and admonition of the Lord and the Bible told us to go and preach the gospel to every creature and can I say it's God's will that none should perish but that all should come to repent so God's interested in growth so if you're saying you don't want to grow you're not interested in what God's interested in their eyes got about that big huh how many have come to our church since this building's been built? Will you raise your hand? Aren't you glad I didn't listen to that person? Uh, they didn't want you here. But some of us did. We're glad you're here. What a blessing, huh? Uh, uh, you see, that river not only represents the presence of God and the power of God and the peace of God and a purpose from God but it also represents a passion for God I love being around people that love being saved I love being around people that love Jesus I mean really love him you know everybody says well I love Jesus but I mean folks that really love him I love being around them they make me a better person hmm I just love being around them. Now listen, I've heard it all my life, and if you've been around camp meeting type preaching, you've heard it too. They say, I can't wait till the river gets out of the banks. Boy, I hope the river gets out of the banks. And what they are really implying, Brother Tommy, is they want the Spirit of God to fall so heavily that it just is so big that it gets beyond the congregation and gets out in the community. That's what they mean. But any time a river gets out of the bank, it causes damage. Look at eastern Kentucky right now. Can I say God doesn't ever want things to be damaged. He comes to repair damaged things. You see, we don't need for the river to get out of the banks. What we need to do is get in the river. Hmm? You know what last weekend was about? Some of you needed to get in the river. And thanks be unto God, some did. I don't know that everybody did, but some got in the river. Uh some got in where the presence of God is. Some got in where the power of God was flowing. Uh, some got peace from God. Uh, some got a purpose for God. Uh, and some uh, had their passion for God reignited because uh, they got in the river. We need to get in the river. Hmm? So how do we get in the river? I'm glad you asked. Uh, there's nothing that gets on my nerves more than a preacher tells us what we need but don't tell us how to get it. Hmm? But some of us are hillbillies and we need a little direction on how to get it brother Brian huh I don't say that because he said amen huh so how do we get in the river how do we get where the presence of God is now listen now brother Josh anybody saved wants to be around the presence of God and anybody saved wants the power of God Anybody that's saved wants the peace of God. But there's some people that want it, but they don't know how to get it. And they go about the wrong ways. They try to give the appearance they have it. Hmm? Huh? But the appearance 
don't mean have it. Hmm. Hmm. Now I can go out in a rainstorm. You thought I got in the river. I was wet. Might have had the wrong source. Hmm. So how do we get in the river? Well, can I say, first of all, you have to be beckoned by God to get in the river. Now, he said he'd not withhold any good thing from his children. So God bids us all to get in the river. Just like when you was lost and he bid you to come get saved, he bids you to get in the river. Now, you can't under your own accord say, well, I, I, I'm going to get in the river today. Don't work that way. So you've got to get in the river while the river's flowing by. And I promise you when the river's flowing, God's saying, come on. Temperature's just right. Come on. Let's get in the river. Come on. Come on. Why do you think we have an invitation after every service? We're inviting you to get in the river. Hmm? Huh? And you can sit on the bank and watch it flow by. But you're not going to be the recipient of everything that's in that river until you get in the river. Now, can I say this? Some people like to do this. And you get enough of the river on you to make you think you're really something. But can I say something? You don't get the effects of the river until you go all in. You, you need to go all in like I go all in at a buffet. I'm going to get a salad. I'll get the other stuff first. I get the salad first. And I'll have a tossed salad. And I'll have coleslaw. I put pepper on my coleslaw and ranch on my salad. And I'll eat that. And then I get rid of the rabbit food and it's time for the main course. And I'm going all in. I'm going to get some kind of chicken product. I'm going to get some kind of pork product. I'm going to get some kind of beef product. You can mark her down. I'm going to get the fixings. I'm going to have green beans. I'm going to have mashed. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten yet tonight. All right. Uh, so uh, I'm going to get. I'm going to get all. I'm going to have all kinds of starch on there. I'm going to have mashed potatoes. I'm going to have mac and cheese. I'm going to have all kinds of things that's going to blow my, you know, whatever out the roof. But I'm going to eat all that stuff. And when it's all done, I'm going to hit the ice cream machine. And then I'm going to complain all the way home. Why did I eat all that stuff? Well, that's just the way it's going to roll. Well, why come to church and just get your toes in? Why don't you get in the river? Get all of it. Because you can't get too much. And let me help you something. On down the road, you're going to need what's in that river. You're going to need it. And, and let me help you something. The devil didn't like us getting help this past weekend. Hmm? He didn't. Listen, every service he tried to send somebody in here to disrupt the meeting. I told somebody, in spite of the devil trying to distract, the light of God shone through every single service. Hmm? Hmm? Who in the world ever heard of a 92-year-old Messianic Jew showing up in a Baptist church? And then my friend, Brother Ed, was holding me. He wanted to talk with me. And an hour later, I'm scratching my head saying, why in the world am I doing this? I said, it's time to go. And I just walked him to the door. Uh, well, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say the devil's trying to rob everything God was a blessing. Because the devil knew that if you got in the river... You're going to get exactly what you need for the next snare, the next thing he's got out there. Listen, you might not have figured this out. Life, life is hard. Life's not fair. You have good days, but it seems like you have some bad days. And sometimes your bad days just cause you to say, what's the use? That's why you need the river. You need to get in the river because what's in the river will propel you through those hard days and those what's the use days. You've got to be beckoned. And the Lord says, come. Can I say, in order to get the river, you not only got to be beckoned, you've got to believe. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And not just enough to believe that He is, but that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. You've got to totally believe 
that God's well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Can I say that God does not answer your prayers when you have a heart of unbelief? If you pray stuff like, God, if you're really there, do this, he ain't going to answer that because he is really there. You don't believe. Huh? Did not Jesus say that if we'd have the faith of a size of a seed of grain of mustard seed? I preached on that one time. Remember when I brought out that little mustard seed? We got the, the faith of the seed of a grain of mustard seed. We can say to a mountain, be thou cast and removed in, into the sea, and it'll happen. You know why a lot of people's mountains aren't moved? They don't have that much faith. But when you believe that you go all in with God, you're going to experience the presence of God, the power of God, and the peace of God, and the provisions of God, and have a passion for God, guess what? You'll have it. You know what separates people that just seem like they love God so much and got so much joy that you couldn't knock them off a stool if you wanted to, and others that come in like Eeyore? I preached on that one time. Miss Pam bought me an Eeyore. It's in my office at home. My dog sees it every now and then. He wants it. He wants it because he wants to chew it up bad. Uh, the Eeyore she got me, it had the tail that removed because if you ever notice the Eeyore, he had a, a nail, you know, or tack with his keeping his tail on. Uh, you'd be in a bad mood too if you walked around with a tack in your rear end, wouldn't you? But the, the one she had had a magnet you pulled off and he'd talk, thanks for noticing. Uh, yeah. She probably paid, that, that was when she was working at Hallmark. I hope she got a discount, but she probably paid 50 bucks for that goofy thing. But listen, some people come into the house of God dragging. And then you hear, ah! You never see them walking around fellowshipping. You never see them smile. Lord, help you if you ask them how they're doing, because they're going to tell you, and then you're going to be sitting right next to them going, oh, why in the world did I talk to these folks? You know what the difference is? The one's gotten in the river believing God is who he says he is. The other believes God is. They just don't believe it enough to get in the river. Let God prove it to them. So you've got to believe. You've got to be beckoned. You've got to believe, but here's the real key. You've got to bow. Until you humble yourself and you become a nobody and he becomes everybody, you'll never experience the river. Hmm? Because, my dear friends, when you're everything, he is nothing. And it doesn't work that way. And as long as you can do things your way, you're saying, I'm everything. But when you come to God with nothing and just lay it all on His mercies and He becomes everything, you'll experience the river, friends. There's a lot of folks didn't get help this week because they really didn't humble themselves and believe what was preached. Hmm? Can I say? you got to bow. you got to humble yourself. There's some people that try to have the presence of God, the power of God, the peace of God, but they're so egotistical and selfish and so full of themselves, they'll never have it. Hmm? When you become a zero with the hole knocked out of it, then God's interested in you. But as long as you're in the way, he'll go right on by you. Not interested. Hmm? I've seen... I've seen preachers have very little Bible education, very little education, barely read, but stand up and the power of God fall on them in ways that some big city preachers that have all the fancy education will never know. You see, because that little country preacher, he has nothing to depend on except God. But those that got all the education and all the know how to do everything the right way, you see, they're so full of themselves, God couldn't use them if he wanted to. Hmm. And there's some that way. They just think they can do it. And God will say, go ahead and do it. And it never amount to anything. You've got to bow. Uh, I've seen people get up and sing, had all the talent, and hit every note and everything, and they sounded good. 
no power. And I've seen folks that really didn't think much of themselves get up saying, and the power of God fall. What's the difference? The attitude of heart. Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Hmm? I've seen churches, boy, they thought they was better than everybody else, never do anything for God. And I've seen, seen just small churches that just loved God, and God showed up and helped them and helped and used them and, and worked through them. Can I say? It's all about humility. You get in the river, you got to bow. And if you don't bow, you'll never get in the river. Thought about this. How do we get in the river, preacher? You got to battle. I'll tell you something. Getting in the river is not easy. If is that what, if it was easy, everybody'd be in it. We used to sing them songs, "Onward, Christian Soldiers." Stand up, stand up. We used to sing songs that made us think about we was in a battle, and the Christian life is a battlefield. It's not. Uh, teeter-tottering on the, on the playground. It's a battlefield. And if you're going to have the power of God, the presence of God, you're going to have to fight for it. How do you battle, preacher? Well, first of all, you're going to have to battle an enemy. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walking about and seeking whom he may devour. We have an enemy. He hates you. He hates your family. He hates everybody breathing God's air. He wants to damn everybody that's lost, and he wants to make miserable everybody that's saved so you can't be a light to those that are lost. And you're going to have to build yourself up on your most holy faith. You're going to have to be in the book. You're going to have to be on your knees. You're going to have to seek after God's face, uh, and you're going to have to resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. My dear friends, don't lose sight of the fact we've got an enemy. Preach one time, some of you remember it. Are you in the devil's bullseye? See, the devil's not worried about anybody that's not doing anything. He's got you right where he wants you. But some that are trying to get in the river, he's got you in the cross the crossfire. And he wants to take you out. I'm glad we got a refuge. His name is Jesus. Huh? But you gotta battle the enemy. Can I say this? You gotta battle the excuses. Hmm? Well, there's only about Eight of us in here are old enough to remember the Kingsman Quartet singing excuses, excuses. We hear them every day. Google it. But can I say, it amazes me the excuses people offer as to why they're not in a river getting help from God. Everybody makes excuses. But preacher, I can't read the Bible. It's too hard to understand. Well, you're telling on yourself. Because if you're acquainted with the author of the Bible, he'll teach you the Bible. Hmm? You don't read the Bible because you're lazy. It is true. Thank you, Brother James. And some are bowing their heads thinking it's time to pray and go home, but it's not. You're lazy. Huh? You see, you, you, you've gotten into this vein of Everything quick and spontaneous. Well, reading and studying the Bible, you go, it's not mass, instant mashed potatoes. You got to get in there and go through some lumps. Sometimes I've got to read a verse four, five, or six times to try and figure out what it's saying. Now, I've only been studying it 48 years. Sometimes I'm cracking open a dictionary. What does that word mean? And I don't know how many times I've read Psalms 46, and I don't know how many times I've preached out of it. It looks like I've got about four outlines right here in my Bible uh, uh, from this uh, uh, psalm. But this is the first time I've ever seen tabernacles with an S. Mm -mm. Can I say you're going to have to battle, quit offering up excuses why you're not in the river? Mm -hmm. Preacher, i got to work. So does everybody. So you don't. You get to read the Bible all day. Oh, I got to work. Trust me. Um, you're 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 more than welcome to to hang with me anytime. Mm -hmm. Can I say we offer excuses? Well, preacher, I I got this going on. Who don't have something going on? See, you have plenty of time to do what you want. But what you're saying is you don't want the things of God bad enough to make plenty of time. You've got to battle those excuses. 
I'm reminded when Jesus bid people to, to a feast, and one said, I can't come, I, I married a wife, and I can't come, I bought a parcel of land, can't come, I got oxen, he's making excuses. And the father of the feast said, go out and get the halt, the maim, and the lame, that my house might be full. You know why God uses folks that the world says that there ain't no way they could ever be used of God because the ones that could be used of God's making excuses and he goes after the ones that nobody wants. That's why those that nobody wanted when they meet the Lord, <laughs> they go all in. You got to battle those excuses. You got to battle your ego. I remember uh, Brother Greg Phillips said that if it embarrasses you, it probably gives glory to God. But I remember Brother Stacy Piercy here one time was a preaching. He said they were singing, I'll fly away. And he said the Lord told him to flap his arms like he was going to fly. He said, Lord, I ain't going to do that. That makes me look stupid. They sang the second verse. He said, Lord, I'm not going to do it. By the third verse, he's tired of the Lord beating him up, and he just started doing this. Now, i got to admit, that looks pretty stupid. But he said, God blew through that service, and the power of God fell just because he was obedient. You see, a lot of times what keeps us from getting in the river is our ego. God, I'm not going to do that. God, I'm not going to raise my hand. God, I'm not going to stand and testify. God, I'm not going to an altar. God, I'm not. Well, you're not going to get in the river. You've got to battle your ego, your pride, your selfish. Can, can you get a hold of the fact, and, and, and Brother Sammy preached on it Sunday night, I'm talking about the very king of glory. Let them strip him and nail him to a cross. You think that didn't embarrass Christ? I know your little picture you got hanging up in the hallway at your house shows him clothed. He wasn't clothed. He was stripped naked before this world. That's why God turned the sun out so the world couldn't look upon the Son of God. And I say, he endured the shame for the joy that was set before him. And as long as we got an ego, we'll never get in the river. We've got to get rid of our selfish desires and our, our pride and, and our vainglory. You see, there, there are folks, they're all into doing something as long as they're getting credit, as long as people are noticing them. Look at me. Look what I'm doing. I'm somebody. All the while, that's their their heart God says no you ain't no you gotta battle that ego I've told you all this many times if I don't know if you've noticed it I tend to have a little bit of confidence no but you know why I won't let you thank me for the message at the door because it's not my message and I'm not going to take credit for it that's why every time folks come through and they say preacher I really enjoyed that I always tell them Give God the glory. Thank the Lord. Let him know, because he's the one that gave me my intellect. He's the one that gave me the abilities that I have. He's the one that showed it to me in the word of God. He's the one that gave me the message. It all came from him, not from me. You get something from Doug Foster, you're going to go out hungry. You've got to battle our egos. And you've got to battle your errors. Some of you are not in the river tonight because you can't get over some point in your past where you failed God. Let me help you something right here. Is there anybody in this building that has never failed God? Stand up. Anybody? Come on, stand up. All right, look around you that's not in the river. We've all failed God. You need to do, if you haven't done it, you need to do what Miss Brittany and Miss Chloe Beth just sang about. You need to get under the blood and then get on with it. Uh, Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark of the high calling of Christ. We've all failed the grace of God. We've failed the grace of God today. Uh, uh, you say, preacher, I blew it. Hey, get in line. Uh, uh, but get it under the blood uh, and then start praising the Lord. He forgave you for it. Uh, and go on and hold your head up and say, hey, uh, I deserve to be in hell, but I'm not going because uh, Jesus loves me. Uh, he forgave me. Uh, and he allows me to go on down the road with him. Uh, you can get in the river if you start battling them errors and get rid of them and just get them under the blood and say, forget it. There's so many people 
they're haunted by past mistakes and they never amount to anything for Jesus because they're holding on to that let me help you with something let it go the preacher it's hard all I know it is let it go and every time the devil brings it up in your mind take him back to Calvary uh, show him where he got whipped then he got whipped when you got saved uh, he got whipped when God forgave you just start pleading the blood the next time the devil starts putting thoughts in your mind just say I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ about the third time you do that the, uh, the devil will take the last trade for the coast Tr trust me he hates the blood of Christ uh, he'll leave you alone for a little while if you're going to get to the river you've got to battle you got to bow. you got to believe. you got to be beckoned. But then lastly, how, how, preacher, can we get in the river? you got to be buried. Oh, yeah. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. You've got to die out to self, to sin, to Satan every single day. You're going to die. I think somebody said this weekend, dead men don't say anything. Dead men don't do anything. Dead men are just dead. And when you die out to you, then you don't speak anymore. You don't follow your desires anymore. You don't get in your way anymore. When you die and get in the river, guess what? God then works through you, and God lives through you, and God speaks through you, and all of a sudden, you can quote, not I, but Christ that liveth in me. You've got to die every day. Die out to all the junk that we hold up before God as to why we can't. If you're going to get in the river, you've got to die. You're in the river, it's no longer you. It's all about God working in and through you. You gotta die. We don't like those terminologies, but that's what you gotta do. Because as long as you're steering the ship, Jesus isn't leading. When you die, He steers the ship. And friends, He always leads you in the paths of righteousness. So I wonder tonight. Are you glad? That verse says the river and the streams thereof make, make us glad. Are you glad? Are you thrilled about the goodness of God? Have you experienced the presence of God and the power of God and the peace of God in your life this week? If not, why don't you get in the river? Just get in the river. I've learned this. When you get around the things of God and you really experience God, you'll never be satisfied till you experience it again. There have been a few times in my life where I've been around where God's presence was so thick, I was afraid to look up, afraid He'd kill me. Where He was that close. Can I say, every time I walk through those doors, I come longing to get that close again you get in the river you'll never be satisfied standing on the bank hmm. Hmm. Seth let me ask you a question if you had your choice being under center and playing quarterback or standing on the sideline cheering on another quarterback which would you rather do you want to be under center I knew the answer to that question. I set him up. Huh? Huh? You want to be dribbling down the court taking the last shot for the game winner? You want to be sitting in the stand saying, shoot it, teammate. You want the ball, don't you? I don't even have to ask Sid. You all know about Sid. She's the one to beat up her teammates to get the ball. Hey, it's a true story. True story. I was at the game. College, senior year. Coach calls timeout, designs the play. They walked out on the court and said, forget all that, give me the ball. They won the game. True story. 
Yeah, look at her. Huh? Said, forget what the coach said, give me the ball. And they won the game. What I'm trying to say is, if you ever get in the river, you're never satisfied looking at everybody else in the river. You want to be in. The Lord beckons us to get in. There are things in the river that only God can do for you. And some of you are here tonight and you need that touch in your life. And the only thing I can say to help you is just get in the river. Let God really do something for you. Friend, it'll change you from this day forward. And you'll be so glad you got in the river. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come and get a song of invitation. Well, they come, let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I know there are some right now that they have apprehension or they have fear about getting in the river because they've never been in it. Lord, there's some who want to get in the river, but Lord, they're there's that sorry devil putting thoughts in their mind telling them how they can't get in the river. Then, Lord, there's some who feel they're not worthy to get in the river. Then, God, unfortunately, there may be some who aren't willing to pay the price to get in the river. But I pray the sweet Holy Ghost and God right now would speak to each one of those hearts and give them the assurances they need to step out and get in the river. God, do for them what they cannot do for themselves. Father, I pray you'd help folks tonight. Those that may be in the river, Lord, help them enjoy the trip. Those who need to get in the river, oh, Lord, help them. Well, thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.